Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.1, Trigonomic Functions in Right Triangles, Part 1. Now we are beginning our study of right triangles, and that is trigonometry. Trigonometry is the study of properties of right triangles, trigonomic functions, and their applications. Next vocab word we have is a trigonomic ratio, and that is a ratio of the lengths of sides of a right triangle. Let's get into some of those trigonomic ratios. First one we have is sine of angle A. And now this guy means angle. That guy right there represents angle. And angle A we are talking about. It says leg opposite of A. So first here's angle A. And now leg opposite of that would be little a. And then we have the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, ladies and gentlemen, is always across from the 90 degree angle. So here's our 90 degree angle. The leg opposite would be the hypotenuse, all right? Always across from the 90 degree angle. Next, we have cosine of angle A. Cosine of angle A is leg adjacent to A over the hypotenuse. Well, adjacent means right next to A, so here's A and then adjacent is right next to where it connects so it's going to be B over and again our hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle so it would be B over C so cosine of A is B over C and then finally we have tangent of angle A is going to be leg opposite of A over leg adjacent to angle A so here we have the leg opposite of A, which we've already seen, is going to be A. And then we have the adjacent, which is B. So tangent of A is A over B. Now let's try some more. Here we have cosec cosecant of angle A is going to be the hypotenuse over the leg opposite of angle A. So it's C over A. Notice how cosecant is the flipped or the opposite of sine secant is hypotenuse over the adjacent which is the opposite of cosine and then finally we have cotangent which is leg adjacent over the leg opposite which is the opposite of tangent so let's get into some problems here we are asked to find the values of the six trigonomic functions for angle g so we first have to find angle g we locate angle g right here we are asked to find sine of angle G sine of angle G is opposite over the hypotenuse so we have four fifths for the sine of angle G next we have cosine cosine is adjacent well what's adjacent it's not the five because the five is the hypotenuse so three is the adjacent side so it's three fifths and then finally, we have tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here's G. Opposite of G is 4 over the adjacent again is what's attached. So it's 4 thirds. And now we have cosecant. Cosecant is the opposite of sine. Or if you would rather, cosecant is hypotenuse, which is 5 over opposite, opposite of Angle G is 4, so it's 5 fourths, or the opposite of sine. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Well, the hypotenuse is 5. Now the adjacent side is 3, or the opposite of cosine. And then finally, cotangent is the opposite of tangent, so it's going to be 3 fourths. Jumping to number two, now we are given tangent of angle A is 5 twelfths. Find the exact values of the five remaining trigonomic functions for A. First thing we have to figure out is how do we put this 5 and 12 on our triangle? Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I know that this 5 is opposite and this 12 is the adjacent. So here is angle A. So opposite would be 5 and the adjacent would be 12. So now we have two sides. How do we find this third side? Well, you guessed it. We have to use Pythagorean. So it's Pythagorean goes a squared plus b squared equals 
c squared. We plug those in. It doesn't matter which one 5 and 12 go into as long as it is for a or for b. So we have 5 squared plus 12 squared, which is equal to c squared. Then we have 25 plus 144. That equals c squared still. Then we have 169 equals c squared. How do we solve for c? We square root both sides, so c equals 13. So now we have c is 13. Now we have everything we need. So let's go ahead and find sine of a. Sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite of angle a is 5 over the hypotenuse, which we just found is 13. Cosine of angle A. We have adjacent, remember it attaches to our angle, but it's not the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, so it's going to be 12 over the hypotenuse of 13. Now we have cosecant. Cosecant is hypotenuse over the opposite or the opposite of sine, so it's 13 over 5. We have secant, which is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is 13 over 12. And then finally, we have cotangent, which is uh, adjacent, sorry, adjacent, which is 12 over the opposite, which is 5. Next, we are going to be given our sides of the triangle with the degree and asked to find the value of x and then round to the nearest tenth. So in number three, we have to figure out all of what we have. Well, we are given this angle, and we also have the adjacent side of it, which is 10. And then we also have the side across from the right angle, which is the hypotenuse. So now, which one of these trig functions uses adjacent and the hypotenuse? That's going to be cosine. So we are going to use cosine. How do we use it? Well, since we are using 45, we go cosine of 45 equals adjacent, which is 10, over the hypotenuse, which is x. So now you can punch cosine of 45 in your calculator. Make sure it is in degrees, and I'll show you in class. But make sure this 45 is in degrees. You type it in. That should give you 0 0.707 equals 10 over x. And once you do this, we know how to solve this because we put that over 1 and cross multiply. So it is 0.707x equals 10. Remember, it's set equal when you cross multiply. We divide by 0 0.707. And so x equals 14.1. So our hypotenuse is 14.1. How can we check this? It, it is the hypotenuse, so it should be bigger than any leg, right? And we have a leg here of 10. 14.1 is bigger than 10, so it works out. Next, on 4, here is x. We're asked to find x. Well, what is x in our triangle? We are given this angle here, 60. Well, x is going to be opposite. And we also have the hypotenuse. So what trig function, what trig ratio uses the opposite and hypotenuse? That is going to be sine. How do we use this? We take sine. What angle do we have? We have 60. That's going to be x because it's our opposite, over the hypotenuse of 12. Sine of 60, you punch in your calculator, it's 0.866. That equals x over 12. Again, we put that over 1 and cross multiply. Now we get it easy. 1 times x is x. 0.866 times 12 is 10.4 for our side. Now, does that make sense? It is 10.4. That is smaller than our hypotenuse, so that will work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you could have also used secant because it's hypotenuse over the adjacent. You would have come up with you would have came up with the same answer, just in a different way. So you can use different trig functions for these as long as you're using what they're giving giving to us. But that does it for the first part of section 12.1 trig functions in right triangles. Good day.